So what? So divine intervention. That song, Ross didn't tune that snare. We brought Ross in after that song got tracked because the guy I had work in the session. Um, I know the it, it, yeah, okay. he admit, he said I he was the guy who was drum teching for me on tour. I'm like, have you ever been in the studio before? Sure, I've been in the studio before. Cool, come work the session. I never I never even knew about Ross. So he was the guy was in there tuning the snare, and two hours later, he still doesn't have it done. And the producer's like, hey man, like, we gotta get going. Like, you know, it's like, you know, I thought you said this guy knew what he was doing. I'm like, yeah, he did. So I went, I, I went and talked to him, say, hey man, like, how's it going? He's like, you know, no, going good. And he's just tuning the snare. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm just going, hey man, like, you know, the producer says, we gotta get going here. He's like, well, you know, it's the first time I've ever done this. I'm all, I'm all wait, I said, you've, you've been in the studio before, right? He's all, no. I'm like, so I went and told the producer, and that's when Ross got the call. This is a wicked, especially for the kind of music that, that Paul plays. Uh, this drum is just wicked for that because it's it's small, so it has a lot of bite. Mm -hmm. But it, because it's it's all bell brass, it's all been cast. It has a, a, a much lower note than you'd think from a drum this small. I mean, I mean, this is this is probably lower than say the Acrolyte or, the, or that six and a half. You know what I mean? It's just it's got so much throat to it. We, we all love to have drums that like, you know, have a lot of pop to them, but within, um, especially when thrash metal was kind of new, the drum, like the, I think the, the kind of drums that drummers wanted to use, I always wanted to use a deeper shell because I wanted, I'm a big Alex Van Halen fan, big John Bonham fan. I love those big drum sounds, but big sounds don't work really well within uh, super fast music because they kind of get muddy, you know, so. Um, it just kind of pick when I when I joined Slayer for the first time, they wanted me to use a piccolo. That's what Dave was using, and so they wanted me to use a pick, and I'd never used one before. Wow, so good, right? Wow, sounds great. Well, flat, once it's flat, this is the way the snare drum should have sounded on that record. <laughs> <laughs> on the first song. That's insane, yeah. man. Wow. This is the first session I think Ross worked with his first Slayer record, um, on a Slayer record. And um, he brought this one in and it was just, it was great. Um, and I've been, in, over time, once I got in the band, I started slowly making my snare drums deeper. <laughs> and now I've got the guys conditioned to a deeper, you know, I'm not, we're not, the band's not around anymore, but, but I got, you know, you know, it, I got them used to and comfortable with, you know, deep, deeper shells. that overall thing when you get a snare drum that sounds good you're gonna give it that extra thing it makes you play it just a little bit you know what I mean it's just you kind of like you want to hit it the right way because it's it's like and for me I rim shot all the time you know so that it, when I hit it when I hit a snare drum and it rim shots and it just takes that rim shot and it just like just pops you know it it's exciting so it makes me feel super excited it, it makes me stoked to play and and the funny thing about heavy metal, with speed metal, with thrash metal, is that you don't get to play slow that often. I don't get to play slow, slow that often. But when I get a great snare drum, it just feels great. And I get a chance to play a slow groove. Like, I mean, like, just, just something simple and big. That's what it's all about. It's filling up a really beautiful like, uh, space in the center image. 
what's great about it too is it, this drum has a lot of depth to it. Yes. So if you tune it up to get that snap, there's still a lot of body there. Still a lot of crap. You know, okay. a, a lot of body. This is the one snare that when I hit it, it really just like, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna keep playing. <laughs> They're all great, but this one I'm like, I just want more of this. There was, this, there was this really big competition on who could be the most technical, the fastest, the heaviest. You know, that's just, that's how it was. Like, and in the midst of all of that, you know, my guitar players are doing all this stuff, you know, and I'm playing as fast as I possibly can. And, you know, somewhere in the middle, you, they either got to catch up or I got to slow down. I'm like, I'm not slowing down. <laughs> you guys, you know, you, you wrote the riff, you play them. But, you know, over time, you kind of, you so. know, yeah, you learn. I learned that you know it's it's not so much about being the fastest. It's probably more about how everything kind of grooves. Sure. I mean, and that's true with everything, right? But that's true. you know, but it's just a faster groove. It's a fat. Well, yeah. If you want to call it a groove, yeah. Um, I know. Can you use the word groove in metal? You know, two words. You can with Black Sabbath. Oh, um, yeah. sure. Dude, when when like when they did when they did ne uh, Nevermind up at Sound City, I, I had been going to Sound City at that point. It was one of my regular stops. I mean, I was there all the time. I was there for uh, for Tom Petty. I did. Uh, uh, I mean, one of the Red Hot Chili Peppers, uh, uh, Slipknot. Uh, I mean, Johnny Cash. All different kinds of people in that room. So I, I was kind of going there as a regular thing, and when when uh, Nirvana came in, I worked on their demos. First time I used this drum, I was working on um, Slayer's Undisputed Attitude record, and we were at Capital Capital Recording Studios. Oh wow! I forget what studio it was. Probably B. I think it was B. Really that's, good sounding that's room. That's great. Yeah. Great. Room. Amazing, amazing room. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we uh, and that's where I started listening to the the drum sound in the cans of the room because oh, wow. they said the room sounded so good. I'm like, hey, let me hear that the the, sure. the room sound, and they put it up there. I'm like, oh my god, wow, this is I never thought wow. about doing that before. Um, so Ross came in and he brought in this um, because we were it was all it's a punk cover record. So because of that, I wanted Ross to bring in a um, 
he brought in, I think it was a Tama. I wanted the Tama Superstar, but I think he brought in the Tama Rockstar drum set. Mm -hmm. Not like a super high endy kit. Sure. You know, and I'm like, because this is a punk cover record and all these sound, songs sound dirty, so I kind of wanted it to sound dirty. Ross can tune anything, so I'm like, it's going to sound good, but it's not going to be this high endy kit. So we were talking about snare drums, and Ross says, well, what are you thinking of for snare drum? What kind of sound are you going for? I'm like, I told him, I said, you know, I go, I've always wanted the, the snare drum sound for Nevermind. I've always wanted that, 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 that sound, that, and I'm not kidding, this is the truth, it's, it's, it's the total truth. And like, Ross says, oh, it's funny, he goes, I just happen to have that drum here. I'm all, really? I'm all, great. So we put, we put it up, and it's, the, this drum, like I, I, I said earlier, like I've tried to find an excuse to use one of these on every album I do. It's, is it realistic? You know, you can get it to sound a bunch of different ways. That's what's great about this drum. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, that's, that's kind of it. Like the first time I, I used it, um, I used it on that record, um, uh, Undisputed Attitude. Um, and then after that, I used it on Exodus Shovelheaded Kill Machine. There was no, I just brought it in. I didn't even ask. Like, this is the drum we're using. Well, I can't tell you how cool this is. This is kind of like, it's such an interesting, it's so, uh, like, like I've told you, I don't work in this genre. But it, but in in a weird way, I'm I'm absorbing information as we all. That, that's that's the beautiful part about our job, right? Now, this uh, is this is I'm enjoying the hell out of this. Right, this it's great. so it's so so. I'm sitting here taking all of this stuff that we're talking about and doing and, and seeing what's going on, and how you approach it. Going, well, how could I improve? You know, how can I implement into that into my everyday tracking scenario? Because I, I like to kind of think of myself as a frustrated drum tech. <laughs> okay. I, I kind of geek out on it, and I, I, I fail a lot of times more than I succeed. <laughs> hey, that's that's a, that's that's you know it's all part of you know it's all part of learning. You know? Right. It really is. I but mean, see, I know Ross is on speed dial, so if I if I screw the pooch, you know. Yeah. Well, having Ross on speed dial is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, I don't know how you do it. I really, do. I mean, to play a show and to play. What, an hour and a half of songs like that? I mean, that's got to be brutal. I just had the, the epiphany of just working with Dave all the time. He, I, he doesn't mute it. That's why I'm always like, why can't he rim? Because I know he's rimming, and I look at his sticks, and they're yes. just like gnarled. And I'm like, oh, he's lifting off. He, but I don't think anybody taught him that, quite frankly. I think he just figured it out one day. Yeah.